since we last met a few years ago, what have you been up to? Oh, um, great question, Tina. I have been working really hard on a book, um, my third book. Um, as some of my readers might know, it takes me a really long time to write a book. So I am um, in the throes of writing, editing, and talking to publishers, agents, uh, and just um, yeah, trying to trying to get this book out into the world. It's been a difficult labor and ongoing. Um, I've also sort of moved into more of a mentorship role. Mm -hmm. So I've been mentoring like young writers, helping people write their novels. I've been teaching a lot of writing workshops. Um, so I think like as I mature into my career, I've also become a writing mentor. Mm -hmm. It's been really lovely to see the new work coming and what mm -hmm. people are um, creating and also to be able to sort of have your fingers into literature, especially mm -hmm. like South Asian uh, mm -hmm. literature and like help hone books and short stories. It's been mm -hmm. really great. Um, you said it takes you a while to write a book. Do you yes. think you're an uh, indisciplined writer? I don't, I don't. You know, like, I think all writers are really different, right? And all books come mm -hmm. at you sort of in different moments and mm -hmm. different times. Like, I was talking to Ramesh, um, and he said Noontide Toll, which is this amazing yes. book, came very quickly to him. Mm -hmm. But then other books take many, many years. Mm -hmm. So. You know, sometimes a book takes more than a decade. Mm -hmm. Like Island of a Thousand Mirrors took a decade to write. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, second book, What Lies Between Us, took about seven years. And this one is taking time. And you know, like the novel is this like marathon. Mm -hmm. It just takes time and it takes sort of patience and um, persistence, almost more than talent. I think a novelist has to be very patient with their work mm -hmm. and let it come. Um, so, you know, I hope in the future maybe I can knock a book out in two, two years. Mm -hmm. Hasn't been my experience mm -hmm. yet, but I'm like hoping that will happen. And can you talk us through your writing process, especially for, for our younger aspiring writers? How, how, what is your writing process? Like? Yeah, I mean, I think what I hope young writers understand is that you don't just write a book and then it's done, right? Like you, I didn't write Island of a Thousand Mirrors and then here it is, it's finished. Mm -hmm. Like I had to edit and edit and mm -hmm. edit. And so in the same way that like, if you think about a sports mm -hmm. analogy, like mm -hmm. a ballerina, when you see her, she looks very effortless. Yeah. She looks like it's easy for her. That's um, so much training mm -hmm. and so much work, right? Mm -hmm. And if you take off, you know, she's spinning, she looks like she just got on the stage and yeah. did that. If you take her shoes off, you see all the work mm -hmm. and you see the bruises and the yeah. calluses. Um, and in the same way, I think um, young writers should understand it takes time. You perfect your book over mm -hmm. so many different editions. Mm -hmm. um, I write at least 10 drafts, mm -hmm. you know, like mm -hmm. I don't just write it and finish, like it's edited over and over mm -hmm. again. Okay. Um, do you think you'll ever write a book set in America? Because mm, we've not seen that from you yet. Um, well, you know, they're, be they're set a little bit in America, like mostly in Sri Lanka, but then there are these immigrant moments. Mm -hmm. um, the book I'm dealing with right now has some parts in America. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if I will ever fully set a book in America. I'm very interested in Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka mm -hmm. is like so full of stories. Um, I have some short stories that are set completely in America with immigrant characters, mm -hmm. um, but a novel, I don't think so. Okay. We'll see. You never know. So you said you have the short stories with the yeah. immigrants. Um, now you were a consultant for the Amazon, was it yeah. Apple TV? Or Apple Amazon? TV. Yeah. Yeah. Can you just tell us a bit about the role you played? In yeah, that? that was really fun. So it was a show called Little America. Yeah. It was produced by um, Kumal Nanjiani, who mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know his other things, but I know right. he's like a big name. Yeah. Um, he was really lovely. What they did is like they had a series of different episodes, mm -hmm. um, narrative episodes yeah. about different immigrants based on real people. Mm -hmm. So for the Sri Lankan one, um, they hired me as a consultant. Mm -hmm. So a I cultural consultant. Cultural consultant. Right. So I, you know, like it was a good script, but it wasn't specifically Sri Lankan, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so for example, that you know, like there's a dance sequence and the mm -hmm. dance sequence is Bollywood, right? Mm -hmm. So they don't, mm -hmm. I'm like, that is a very problematic mm -hmm. thing. Like you have to change this. You have to get a Sri Lankan mm -hmm. um, troupe to come in and perform, which all right. of these like sort of budgetary mm -hmm. things, but you have to do it because mm -hmm. it was the first time in America we had a Sri Lankan story. Uh -huh. So I was very adamant that 
Um, we tried to stay as close to Sri Lankan, you know, mm -hmm. Sri Lankan culture as we could. What was the reception to that program? Yeah, you know, like I think they did really well. Like it's a really great TV show. So, um, you know, they have these different segments. It's a Nigerian one, Sri Lankan one, a French one, you know, like from all over the world. Mm -hmm. Really interesting stories. And each one based on a real person. So this was based on a real Sri Lankan mm -hmm. woman in Texas. Mm -hmm. So much yeah. fun, such a great story. Yeah. And how was it like to work with Bernard and Isuri? Oh, Bernard is, I love Bernard. He's lovely. Um, he played the father. Yeah. Um, he, you know, initially, we changed the script because initially the character was a musician. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, this is like very unlikely that a musician is going to come and it yeah. doesn't work, right? Yeah. I'm like, he needs to be an engineer or doctor. This is Absolutely. what happens. Stereotypical. Stereotypical. But, you know, like people will connect to that. Uh -huh. And he said, well, I don't know how to play a musician. I said, okay, well, you, you can hang out with my dad. Mm -hmm who's an engineer. Yeah. So Bernie went and hung out with my dad, okay. who is an engineer uh -huh. in LA. And just my dad took him on a tour, showed him bridges, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. and he used a lot of that. that it was lovely. Character. Bernie's wonderful. Um, Isuri is so lovely, so talented. I just am so excited to see everything she does. She mm -hmm. just um, embodied that character so well. Um, seeing them together, mm -hmm. right? Seeing that immigrant story of the daughter who feels like she's betrayed her father and the yeah. father sort of having an emotional realization. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was just, we all felt so mm -hmm. just deeply touched because mm -hmm. we hadn't seen our immigrant story Absolutely. in America, ev like ever, yeah. right? So I think this must have been the first time first that time. the diaspora could recognize yes. or relate to characters yes. in that, right? Yes. Yeah. So Getting back to the Sri Lankan literary scene, we produced another book of winner last year. Amazing. Um, how being a person living away from Sri Lanka but very much involved or observing the literary scene here, how do you think we have our literary scene has evolved? What do you think of it? Oh wow. I mean, the Sri Lankan writers are amazing, you know, like um, every now and then somebody, a reader will be like, wow, there's a lot of you doing very good yeah. work. And it's true, you know, we are a tiny country mm -hmm. and we produce like these amazing writers. Mm -hmm. um, how has it evolved? I don't know. I think it's always evolving. I think um, I'm just really thrilled. It's so exciting to see Shane Han. I, mm -hmm. I'm sure you knew him ages ago. I knew him ages ago. Mm -hmm. um, and just to see that kind of um, recognition and to like mm -hmm. such a Sri Lankan story mm -hmm. to get that kind of recognition yeah. is like, just, um, it just makes me really, really happy. Mm -hmm. And I'm really thrilled to be both, um, I mean, now Island has become, now my books have become sort of like the older generation or something, right? Yeah. But I often meet like young people who didn't even, don't even know there was a war in Sri Lanka, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Like diasporic people. Yeah. Um, and they are like, I learned about that in your book, which is, this is the way we learn, yeah. right? Like, um, it's, all, it's about capturing these moments of mm -hmm. time that are going. And that's going to continue into the future. Like younger writers are going to capture their specific moments of Sri Lankan history, and right. it's so important. Mm -hmm. Correct me if I'm wrong, but some of your books have become texts in university um, writing courses, right? Do yeah. you want to elaborate a bit on that? Um, I haven't kept track, but every now and then somebody will write to me and send me their PhD thesis okay. or master's thesis, uh -huh. and it's very exciting because I actually dropped out of a PhD, you know, because mm -hmm. I couldn't. Um, I did. I wanted to write instead of write the technical mm -hmm. things, and it's it's like wow, this is amazing. So it's entered the um, my work has entered the canon in that mm -hmm. way, and people are studying it. Mm -hmm. It's fabulous. Yeah. Right. And I know you lived for a while in Sri Lanka, then Nigeria, and then you moved to the U.S. So growing up, who were your literary influences? Yeah, that's such a good question. Um, I was three years old when we left Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. We went to Nigeria, and then from Nigeria, when I was 12, we moved to Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, when I was, growing up, grow I was growing up in Nigeria in a very small village, we didn't have access to a lot of books. Mm -hmm. So once a year we would go to England on the way to Sri Lanka and I would get to buy books which mm -hmm. was just like oh my god and then I read those books over and over again. Mm -hmm. 
early influence was Gerald Durrell, My mm -hmm. Family and Other Animals, mm -hmm. which I think a lot of people really love that book. Uh -huh. And it's such a sweet book. It's about his family moving to Corfu during the World, World mm -hmm. War II. Um, but as much as it's like sweet, the language is a really rich mm -hmm. and beautiful. And I think it, I read that book so many times as a child, it sort of entered my mm -hmm. um, imagination that you could do that with words. Mm -hmm. And then much later, I think mm -hmm. it sort of haunts everything I write. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, although we have a lot of writers who have done great things, I still find when I travel that people do not know much about Sri Lankan authors. Yeah. What can we do to Ooh. bring it, take it out, basically? Yeah. That's, oh, well, I know, it's it's really interesting because like as a writer, I read a lot, mm -hmm. right? But like, for example, Guy Gunaratna, because he's so British, mm. British Sri Lankan, right? Like no one in the US has even heard of him. Yeah. Um, which is shocking and terrible, right? Like mm -hmm. he's so brilliant. Um, what can we do? I mean, like the first thing I would really want Sri Lankans to do is read us. Mm -hmm. You know, like I feel like we have, um, so much to say and have explored mm -hmm. so much mm -hmm. i hope sri lankans like read us mm -hmm. and then that enthusiasm spills over mm -hmm. when you're having a conversation about a book mm -hmm. oh you know you should read mm -hmm. this like oh you're maybe coming to sri mm -hmm. lanka interested in sri lanka any number of things mm -hmm. i mean guy doesn't even write about sri lanka but like he's writing about these very interesting global yeah. phenomena right and um i think the personal enthusiasm about books spills over Mm -hmm. So it's not even, I don't know what you can do sort of structurally, but I like that individual, I love this book, like mm -hmm. maybe you should read it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you think that um, maybe our missions overseas could maybe organize literary festivals? Sounds good to me. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so far, how have you enjoyed the Lit Festival? Oh, Lit Festival has been amazing. It's day one, I just started a writing workshop. I had about 10 students come and we, read and we wrote and they spilled their guts and mm -hmm. we all cried a little bit right. and it was really really wonderful now i know you do um, writing workshops online as well yes if you want to speak to us tell yeah. our viewers a bit more about that yes that might interest them. oh yeah that's wonderful um i teach writing online workshops they are generative i give um, a prompt i read them a poem and then i ask them a question and they spend about 10 to 15 minutes writing and then if they feel comfortable we share i give feedback um, mm -hmm. it's very supportive it's very the point is not like a critique the point mm -hmm. is to get you started writing and get those juices right. flowing because often like you don't even understand that you want to tell a story mm -hmm. until you give it some space and some time and right. then it people are quite surprised by how much rises mm -hmm. so they can look me up naomi munavira right. com, and there's information there they can write to me and they can be from any part of the world yeah any part of the world because it's online so right. we got to figure out the time zones a little do bit do they have to be like english graduates or what is the level expected? absolutely open even big like any level any level super okay just um somebody who is interested in exploring writing uh -huh. who likes to read and wants to be more than anything like sort of in community with other writers right so it's a very safe supportive community mm -hmm. super yeah. okay naomi thank you very much for your time great thank you tina